Hi, I'm Rebel Brown here for 12 Most. Today we're going to talk about one of the biggest shifts in our business ever. That's the empowerment that today's digital buyers enjoy. You see, 10 years ago, our buyers were reliant on us to give them information. Well, you can forget that story because today's buyers can go out and research, compare, identify, and select their final vendors without us ever even knowing they were looking. That's right, welcome to the digital age and welcome to today's empowered buyers. In fact, recent surveys show that they go through almost 79% of the buying cycle before they ever talk to any vendor representative. That's right, they are empowered, they're on their own, and they have the control. Now, that shift in the buying cycle has some pretty big effects on how we as businesses compel those buyers to engage with us. And that's what I want to talk about today, the 12 most powerful shifts you can make to engage and attract today's empowered buyers. Let's take a look. So what are those most 12 powerful shifts? Number one is be relevant. You know what? What you want to talk about may or may not be relevant to what your buyer needs to know. We were all taught to push, 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 promote products. Well, guess what? They don't care anymore. They want to know about relevant information to help solve their problems, open their opportunities, and give them a competitive advantage. That means that you telling them about everything about your value may or may not be relevant to them. So find out what's relevant to your buyers. Talk about relevant things to them, not yourself. Now that ties into number two. So how do you learn to be relevant? Well, think buyer value. You know, we were all taught, talk about cool products, talk about our stuff. That's not right in the digital age. Today's world, we want to talk about where's the buyer value. Value is in the eyes of the beholder and the only beholder that really matters is the one with the bucks. So unless you're buying your products, then start thinking about the buyer's value and what's valuable to them and stop worrying about what you think is nifty cool. It's about them. It's all about them. Now, number three is listen more. That's how we learn what their value is. How long has we businesses wanted to be able to talk to our markets, to really understand our audiences? Well, guess what? The digital age empowers us to do that. But not if we're sitting there me, 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 chest thumping and talking, talking, talking. We have to listen. We have to learn to talk to them, converse with our buyers, and then listen to what they're saying. And you know what? We can't do that if we're doing number four, which is thumping our chefs with all these adjectives. Forget the adjectives. You know what? When, you see, when I see three adjectives in a row with no evidence, I think blah, 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 and I move on to the next vendor. And you know what? So do your buyers. So instead of using those chest thumping adjectives that everybody gets from some Chinese menu of descriptors of products, instead, let third-party evidence speak about your value your customers, your partners, experts in your field. That's who your buyers want to hear from. They want to see evidence. They want facts, not chest thumping adjectives. So if you want to be clear and compelling, use the facts. Use evidence that's created as part of the value you delivered to customers, as part of what your value have seen, as what the experts forecast your, imp your imp impact is going to be on your buyers. Let the evidence speak for you, not those big adjectives and not what you want to say. Now, forget popularity. This is another one. Number six, try to pay the bills with all that popularity. All those clicks, all those click throughs, all those downloads, all those followers, all those likers. Try paying any of your bills with that. You know what? Popularity was great in high school, but in today's world, you can be popular as heck and your ROI and your bottom line can be diving. I mean, who knows if all of those followers and friends are actually even your target market? I mean, and especially when you consider that everybody's out there buying fake followers. Who cares? It's not about popularity. It's about communicating and engaging with buyers who are compelled to investigate and buy your products. So start measuring the measurements that matter to your business and let everybody else worry about popularity and go back to high school. Number seven, stop being greedy. You know, the economy has us all going. We want money, money, money. Instead of being greedy and charging for everything, learn how to share your expertise. That 
intangible value that is in your knowledge, in your years in the business, in all of the time you've spent with customers like this particular buyer. Share your expertise freely. Get out there and be the expert that your buyers listen to. That's how you build credibility. That's how you build engagement. That's how you get ahead in digital in our today's digital world. Not by being greedy and not by being me, me, me. Now, number eight goes right along with this. Fuel your community. Get your community engaged in talking to each other. And forget the old thing about, well, we don't want our prospects talking to our customers because somebody might say something bad. Guess what? They're already talking. So wouldn't it be better if you were the one to facilitate those conversations? If you were the one that was involved in those conversations, engaging, bringing those people together? Fuel your community. If they're going to talk, be involved, be facilitating, and be the expert engaged in that community. Don't be the one that's saying, oh no, I don't want them to talk. I can't let them talk. They're not gonna talk. They are. Fuel that community. Now number nine goes right with that. Forget the old ways of doing campaigns, push, 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 our messages out to the world. This is how we always did marketing, right? We had our strategy, we created a plan, we created a messaging platform, we created a content platform, and then we out with campaign, 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 campaign to audiences. Social media comes along, the digital age comes along, so what do we do? We add the opinions of the masses from everybody in God that's following us on social media, whether they're actually a target buyer or not, and we push, push, push conversation is the new campaign. So instead of thinking of this left to right model, think about creating conversations based on relevance to your buyer, on your expertise, on educating, and make everything dynamic. Get the communities going, get conversations going. Empower your teams to have those conversations. Make your content more dynamic. Everything has to become more conversational if you want to drive engagement. And by the way, a one-off conversation is not what we're after. We're after long-term engagement, which means interactive, ongoing, evolving conversations with our buyers. Not just the old, I'll tell you and you listen kind of thing, okay? Now, number 10 goes along with this. Get dynamic with your content. You know, the idea that we get a question, run off and build a white paper, and it takes three months to deliver that, versus creating a relevant snippet that immediately asks answers the question that that, that that customer, that buyer asked. We can have a relevant snippet in three hours. It takes three months to deliver a white paper, so why do we keep thinking in terms of big content? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with big content. I'm saying we have to do more than that. Now, content people get all nasty with me about this because they're like, that somebody even was so nasty as to call me a new age philosopher on LinkedIn. Well, I couldn't figure out why until I found out that he makes his living writing big content. And he doesn't want this shift to happen because guess what? If you empower your people to be experts and to create relevant snippets, you may not need all those writers anymore to create those big long white papers that nobody reads and that take forever to get out. There's a better way. Find it, okay? Number 11, leave the office now. All the time you spend in meetings talking among yourselves about your value, about what you're gonna do, you're talking to yourself. You may not be relevant. Get out there with your market and talk to your buyers. And by the way, I don't just mean at trade shows. Get out and converse, listen, learn. Get into the minds of your audiences. Get into the minds of your buyers. Then you'll know how to be relevant, how, where, their buyer, where your buyer value is, how to engage, how to converse. You'll find the answers in your market, not inside the walls of your building. And finally, number 12. If you don't hear anything else I said, here's the number one thing you can do to power shift. Fix your website. 68% of B2B buyers say that your website is the primary place they go to get information about you. 78% of vendors say their websites, well, they pretty much suck. Now, what is that if not a huge disconnect? It's just plain wrong. You know what? Go take a fresh look at your website. If the homepage is all about me, 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 and you, 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 you've got the wrong homepage. Make it about them. Share information that's relevant. Share your customer stories. Share your evidence. Let your third party speak. Let experts speak. And get rid of you, you, you. Make it about them, them, them. Okay? That's how we engage with a digital buyer in today's marketplace. And you know what? I know you all can do it, so let's get out there. Let's practice a 12-step program for engaging and empowering with today's buyers. Go for it. You can do it.